Hey everyone, welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin. Today I'm going to be doing quite possibly the biggest birthday unboxing I've ever done in my entire life. As you can see, all of these lovely parcels behind me were sent to me from you guys, you amazing, lovely people who watch my channel and love supporting what I do. I don't know why, I genuinely do not know why you still support me, why? But I do want to unbox them all in this video, give you guys the biggest thank you ever, each and every one of you guys who have sent me something. And I'm a little bit worried that, I mean one, that this video is going to be like three hours long. And two, the gift notes in the package as well. Sometimes Amazon don't pack them in. So I'm worried that a lot of these will not have gift notes so I won't know who to thank. So if I do say in the video that this book doesn't have a gift note, please let me know in the comments below if you are the person who sent me it because I would love to give you a personal thank you just to say how grateful I am to you. So it is May 4th as I'm filming this so if you have sent me something and I haven't unboxed it in this video then do not worry it probably is on its way to me. My birthday isn't until May 7th which is on Friday and that's when I want this video to go up so happy birthday <laughs> also you do not need to send me anything for my birthday if you feel like you have to please don't please don't feel that way you can just give me a happy birthday in the comments that is absolutely fine that's all I need I just absolutely love and adore you guys and your support has just meant the world to me I'm kind of scared to start though <laughs> I'm kind of scared to start so I do have a coffee to say this through but it took so long for me to start this video that I've got like a tiny little bit left so I'm going to end up having to make another one halfway through this video, aren't I? <laughs> but I have to try and be careful that I don't show you guys my address as well. I mean, the reason why I opened my wish list after a year of having it closed is because people were asking for my address, but I didn't want to give my address out, so this was the next best thing. So thank you again, but um, I want to make sure that I keep my address hidden. I'll try and give you guys the briefest of summaries as well for all of these books too, so that I'm not overwhelming you, or me, with all of the books in this video. So, And before I start as well, my friend Liam has made, well he's just opened an Etsy store which I will link down below, it's called Crooked Quill Print Co. But he asked me what 10 middle grade books I wanted in a print because, you know, he like hand makes them. So I think he drew all of this and like look at that, These, this is a book stack, it's a custom book stack and you can do like any 10 books for you. And like he asked me which 10 I wanted so I said like Frostheart, Nevermore, Wild Spark, The Hat Makers, Where the Mount Meets the Moon, Rainbow Grey, A Pinch of Magic, The House with Chicken Legs, Tilly and the Book Wanderers, and Amari and the Night Brothers. So look, isn't that like so cool? Like look at that, that is just like... Oh, he did all of that himself, like he drew it. He drew all of this himself, like, oh, and this is amazing. I want to put it in like a frame, but it's like a book stack. It's a book stack, I can even have it that way too if you wanted. But like, yeah, these are like 10 of my favorite middle grades. I mean, there's more, there's way more that like I would call a favorite of mine, but I had to narrow it down to 10 and I was like, well, I want a little bit of a mix of fantasy on here. So this is my like fantasy middle grade book stack and I love it so much. So he's actually done one without shading as well, which I might do a giveaway for. So guys, follow the Instagram below. And and comment on the latest picture on there saying Gavin brought me here and then I will pick a winner from those comments and DM them and ask if they want this uh, book print. This is the one that doesn't have the shading so I will be happy to send this off internationally so yeah go and do that. That would be awesome. But also like there's this smaller one because this is like an A4. This is an A5 one. It's got like some classics on this one and this was just like a, a nice little one that he gave me. Again you could just choose anything but also this read with pride bookmark that you did too with like look at that isn't that so cool with a rainbow and then loads of different books on there with some lgbtq plus representation on there as well and he sells these like these so honestly show him some love go and comment on one of his uh, latest photos on instagram and i'll pick a winner <laughs> for the unshaded print this isn't even like stuck down properly like now i'm worried that books have fallen out even though i don't need to i'm still doing this <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I got this book. Oh, I've, I've been really wanting this book. So I mean, I want to say that about every single book on this video because again, it was my wish list. But uh, Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. So this book has recently been longlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction. And there was this whole thing about, you know, transphobes and turfs signing this petition against this book being on the Women's Prize for Fiction Award because the author is a trans woman. And all of the turfs have used like dead authors' names to sign this petition. And honestly, it's one of the most disgusting things ever. I really want to support this author. I really want to read this book. I think it sounds phenomenal. Oh, but I want to know who it's from first. Who is it from? Oh, oh it's from Victoria, from what Victoria read. 
I love you. Thank you so much. And I will link everyone's channels in social medias in the description box as well for anybody who I like I'm aware of that have channels and things. So if I've missed you out as well and you've sent me something, do let me know. Let me know if you have a channel in the comments and I will put it in the description box again. Thank you so much. But oh, thank you. I've been really wanted to read this. It says that recently Ali had it all a loving relationship with Amy, an apartment in New York, a job she didn't hate. She scraped together a life previous generations of trans women could only dream of. The only thing missing was a child. Then everything fell apart and three years on, Reese is still in self-destruct mode, avoiding her loneliness by sleeping with married men. When her ex calls to ask if she wants to be a mother, Reese finds herself intrigued. After being attacked in the street, Amy did transition to become Ames, changed jobs and, thinking he was infertile, started an affair with his boss Katrina. Now Katrina's pregnant, could the three of them form an unconventional family and raise a baby together? Ooh, yeah, I just really want to support this author, like, so badly. So again, thank you so much, Victoria, for sending me this. Okay, next is... Oh, this one's packaged. Oh, how sweet. And I feel like this hat's gonna keep falling off, but I'm not showing you my head, it's not getting cut till next week. Oh, you know, oh, it's cut off the message. It's cut off the message halfway through, so I can't actually see who sent it. Oh, is there a note in here? Oh, this one's from Emily. Oh, thank you so much, Emily. I'll not read out all of the notes as well, because I feel like that would also make it a really long video. Oh, yes. Oh, I've wanted this for quite some time, actually. Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas, and I have seen this everywhere. I'm really late to the game. When his traditional Latinx family has problems accepting his gender, Yadriel becomes determined to prove himself a real brujo. With the help of his cousin and best friend Maritza, he performs the Quince's ritual himself and then sets out to find the ghost of his murdered cousin Miguel and set it free. Ooh. However, the ghost he summons is actually Julian Diaz, the school's resident bad boy, and Julian is not about to go quietly into death. He's determined to find out what happened and tie up some loose ends before he leaves. Left for no choice, Yadriel agrees to help Julian so that they can both get what they want. But the longer Yadriel spends with Julian, the less he wants to let him leave. Oh, I feel like this is going to end up making me feel all of the emotions. So again, thank you so much, Emily. Like, oh. So this is going to get really messy really quick, so I just want to make sure I stay on top of things. <laughs> I did, oh my god, I almost forgot I put this on my wish list, but I did. It's Grimworld by Avery Moray. It's like a really, really thin book, but I'd heard some good things about it and nobody was talking about it. This one is from Larissa, so thank you so much, Larissa. Every day, 13-year-old Henry Batts has his usual bowl of sugar slugs, helps tend cobalt sidewinders at Frank's Peculiar Pets, and keeps to himself with his comic book collection. Just your typical day in Grimworld, where the sky is always dark and shadows lurk in the streets. What's not typical is the suspicious night spook luring Henry into a cemetery in the middle of the night with the promise of a prized comic book. Uh, where did I hear this from, though? Ah, oh, there was... I don't know if it was somebody talking about it or if I just saw it scrolling, but I just remember thinking, ooh, that's all I remember about where I got this from. Oh god, I made memory is shocking. But again, like, thank you so much, Larissa, for this. I will be your guinea pig to test this out first. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, this one's from Emma Dixon. Thank you so much, Emma. It's The Magic Fish by Chung Lee Nguyen. This is like a graphic novel sort of style as well. Like, how cool is that? How cool is that? Again, I can't remember where I got this recommendation from. I need to start writing everything down. <laughs> Real life isn't a fairy tale, and fairy tales the prince falls in love with the princess. But Tian has a different story to tell. His parents are refugees struggling to learn English, and he doesn't know how to come to them in Vietnamese. If he doesn't even have the right words, how can he ever know if his parents will accept him? The answer is in fairy tales, a language that Tian and his parents share. Tian learns from his favourite stories as he navigates the world with the help of friends, family, and fairy tales. Oh, gosh, doesn't it just sound incredible? It sounds amazing. And if I remember where I got these recommendations from, then I will put them in the description box or I will leave a comment down below. But, oh, I'm so excited to read this and just, like, seeing all of the graphic novel colour in just... Oh, it just looks so good. Thank you, Emma. Oh, yay. Oh, my gosh, considering how many times I've seen this book around... You guys should be happy about this one. But it is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. But I'm excited. Everyone's been reading it recently. So thank you, Laura. Laura Roberts, thank you so much for sending me this book. I really, really appreciate it. The year is 1926 and Shanghai hums to the tune of debauchery. 
A blood feud between two gangs runs the streets red, leaving the city in chaos. At the heart of it is 18-year-old Julia Kai, a former flapper who has returned to assume her role as the proud heir of the Scarlet Gang, a network of criminals far above the law. Their only rivals in power are the White Flowers, who have fought the Scarlets for generations. And behind every move is their heir, Roma Montagov, Juliet's first love and first betrayal. But when gangsters on both sides show signs of instability culminating and clone their own throats out, the people start to whisper of a contagion and madness, of a monster in the shadows, as the dead stack up Juliet and Roma must set their guns and grudges aside and work together, for if they can't stop this mayhem, then there will be no city left for either to rule. <laughs> yeah, uh, Romeo and Juliet return set in 1920s Shanghai. Oh god, I'm so excited for it. Laura, oh, you've just done me a service with this one. Thank you so, so much for this. Okay, again, this is just left wide open. Anyone could take anything from it. Uh, let's see what's in here. Oh, yes. To help with my Penguin English Library collection, Emma by Jane Austen, which I read a couple of months ago and really enjoyed. It might be my favourite Jane Austen book so far. So Darian from Darian Reads, thank you so, so much for sending me this. Oh, like you've made me smile with this. Like, thank you so much. So this does follow Emma Woodhouse and she is rich, she is spoiled, and she is a bit of a like a social matchmaker in her small community. She ends up befriending a new girl in town. It's a classic. It's a Jane Austen book. What more do you need? <laughs> oh, Thank you so much. And the next one. Ooh, 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 ooh. This one, I know exactly where I got the recommendation of this one from. And that is The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss. I got this recommendation from Olivia from Olivia Reads a Latte. And it is from Nina. Thank you so much, Nina. I appreciate this. I've already been doing this, like, but I will be reading from the back and giving you the synopsis because I don't think I can explain a lot of these very well, just like based on my ideas alone, unless it's middle grade. I don't know why, but with middle grade books, I can explain them so well without having to read the back of them. But when it comes to young adult and adult books, I struggle and I don't understand why I do that. So I am just reading from the backs of these just so I don't butcher any synopsises. Anyway, this one follows Mary Jekyll, alone and penniless following her parents' death, quickly finds herself drawn into the secrets of her father's mysterious past. A clue leads her to believe that Edward Hyde, her father's former friend and a murderer, ooh, a murderer, may be nearby, and there is still a reward for information resulting in his capture, a reward that would solve all her immediate financial woes. But her hunt begins her not to Edward Hyde, but to Diana, his daughter, and the unferal child left to be raised by nuns. With the assistance of Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson, Mary continues her search for the elusive Hyde, and soon gathers around her more women, all of whom have been created through terrifying experimentation, Beatrice Rappuccini, Catherine Moreau, and Justine Frankenstein. With their investigations lead them to the discovery of a secret society of immoral and power-crazed scientists. The horrors of their past soon arrive on the doorstep as well, and now it is up to the five women to stop the malicious machinations of the Society des Alchemists. Quite simply, it is time for the monsters to triumph over the monstrous. Ooh, God, I just, I'm so excited to read it. I think it's gonna be fab. And I think this is like the start of a trilogy, like, I know there's more books in the series. So again, thank you so much for sending me it, Nina. Uh, let's, uh... Honestly, I'm very interested to see how many books I end up with in this haul. There's, ch there's two in this one. <laughs> so we have... Oh, yay! It's one of my faves! It's one of my faves! Hang on, there's two in here. Is this... Okay, right, the, the two different books. But we have Arusha and the End of Time by Roshni Chokshi. And also Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I read Jane Eyre, I think it was at uni, and I really enjoyed it. I need a reread of it so badly, and it is a Penguin English Library edition. Who was, who were these by? Who were these by? Oh, Noemi. And also, I'm so sorry if I pronounced her name wrong. Is it Noemi? Yeah, this was in my top 50 middle grades of 2020. However, I didn't own like the proper like American edition of it with the Rick Wright and Presents thing. And this is also one of Noemi's favorite classics, so I'm really happy about that. But yeah, I would share, it follows a girl. Okay, right, this is middle grade, so I can explain it. Also, I've read it and I do love it. So this one follows Aru and she lives in a museum and she has some classmates come over unexpectedly and they catch her in a lie. She ends up unleashing a super demon from this magical lamp just to prove something. But then things start to go from bad to worse for Aru and it sets off this sort of huge quest for Aru. It is, you know, filled with Hindu mythology. It is great. I love it. So that is Arusha and the End of Time. And then we also have Jane Eyre. And this one, I wouldn't really know how to begin describing it. But I do remember some of like the more gothic parts of this because that's what I focused on when I read this book. But it's a story of a defiant, fiasi, intelligent woman who refuses to accept her appointed place in society and instead finds love on her own terms. Can't wait to give it a reread. I think it's going to be fab the second time I read it. So thank you again so much. I 
really appreciate it, Noemi. And again, if I said your name wrong, please correct me in the comments. Right, next. Oh my god, it literally it does feel like my birthday morning. Oh my gosh! It does feel, in fact, it feels like my birthday morning and Christmas morning wrapped up in one. This is by Marina. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Marina. But it is Anya and the Dragon by Sophia Pasternak. And I've seen this on Jade's channel before and I got so interested in reading it. However, this is middle grade, but I can't remember what it's about. Something else moved just beneath the water. So, oh yeah, is that just a, that, that's just a quote. Don't stand out. That's what Anya's babushka has always told her. Keep to yourself and don't cause trouble. But their family is about to lose their home and Anya isn't about to stand around and do nothing. Her best option is working from the Sars henchmen who offer an easy bargain, money in exchange for helping them capture a dragon, which Anya isn't even sure exists. With magic on their side, it seems like a pretty easy deal. But in this tale of mayhem and magic, other fantastical creatures abound, as do tyrannical rulers, violent vikings, and Russian folk heroes, making Anya question everything she thought she knew. As secrets are revealed and loyalties tested, she'll have to make the most difficult decision of her life, save her family or save her friends. It sounds so good, and I'm sure Jade really likes this series too, and I think this is the second one too. So, oh, oh is this the, I'm sure this is the first one. Yeah, I think this is the first one. So thanks so much for sending me it, Marie. <laughs> There's two in this one. Oh, these are from Mindy. Mindy, thank you so, so much. And you know what? I should have known. As soon as I saw what one of the books was in this, I just I just should have known. But in this one, Mindy has sent me Antihero by, um, written by Kate, Carius Quinn and Demetria Lunetta, illustrated by Maka Gill. And I think this one is a recommendation I got from Ashley's channel from Bookish Realm. I'm pretty sure this is where I saw this recommendation. But um, this one, it follows Piper and Sloane and they're two 13 year old girls with very different lives with similar secrets. It's not so easy being a hero or a villain. When a mission to steal an experimental technological device brings the two girls face to face with each other, the device sparks and the two girls switch bodies. Now they must live in each other's shoes as they figure out a way to switch back. So I think it's like a hero and a villain and they like switch bodies. But it is like a very short graphic novel. Oh god, I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm pretty sure that's where I got my recommendation from, was that from Ashley. And then, of course, City Spies Golden Gate by James Ponty. This is a sequel to City Spies, which follows a group of kids and they become spies. Like, I, I don't know how else to describe it. But they do. I think they go around the world solving mysteries because in the first book, they go to Paris. And this one, there's a Golden Gate Bridge. So they must go to San Francisco. And Mindy, I should have known this from you because Mindy absolutely loves the first book and has been recommending this series like so much and I got the first book in an Alfred Junior box last year and I look forward to read, I might read them both together actually. So again, thank you so much for sending me these two, Mindy. Mwah. So this is a bit of a bigger box too. Let's have a look. Oh, there's two in here. Oh, I've been really wanting to read this one. In fact, um, at work the other day, a young girl was reading this at school and she was telling me she was loving it. And that is Pax by Sarah Pennypacker and illustrated by John Classen. And this is such a beautiful book. Such a beautiful book. I don't think there's that many illustrations, to be honest. So this one follows Pax and Peter, and they've been inseparable ever since Peter rescued Pax as a cub, and Pax is like this little fox. But when Peter is forced to return his fox to the wild, his world is torn apart. Oh my god, I think like this one's just gonna make me cry. I think it's gonna make me cry. That's not the only thing in this box though. There is also The Ninth Rain by Jen Williams. This is, I'm sure, an adult fantasy that I saw again on someone's channel, and I can't remember whose channel it was on. The city of Abora once glittered with gold. Now its streets are stalked by wolves. Tormelin the Authless has no taste for waiting to die while the realm of his ancestors falls to pieces. Talk about a guilt trip. When eccentric explorer Lady Vincenza, vintage de Grayson, offers him employment, he says way out. Even when they are joined by a fugitive witch with a tendency to set things on fire, the prospect of facing down monsters and retrieving artifacts is preferable to the abomination left behind. But not everyone is willing to let the empire collapse, and the adventures are soon drawn into a tangled conspiracy of magic and war. Ooh, this is the first book of the trilogy. Oh, again, it looks so good. So these books were by Larissa. Did you get me more books? So these are from Larissa, who already sent me some books. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Larissa. You've literally spoiled me rotten. This is definitely like a bigger package. I think this might be from Claire. I think this might be from Claire because I remember getting it in Claire sending me a DM. This has gone cold, hasn't it? Once I'm through with this first stack, I'm going to quickly grab my Belgian chocolate Frostino and then I will continue on. So let's, let's open it up. I can't open it. I can't open it. Come on. Come on. I can't even rip it. I'm going to make a shit. Guys, I can't get into it. Oh, oh, there we go. 
Yeah, this is from Claire, I knew it. Oh, yay. <laughs> So it is the Lockwood & Co series by Jonathan Stroud. I believe this one, The Screaming Staircase, is one of Jamie Littler's favourite books ever. And I remember, I think it was for the first believe -a -thon when I was asking for recommendations. And I believe he said The Screaming Staircase was one of his favourites. Now I have the series. This series is going to go into my TBR bag of dread kind of um, bag thing for my TBR game. Not because, I mean, I genuinely do want to read them, but I'm going to put all of the series on one on slip of paper and put it in that bag so that when I pull it out I'll have to read the entire series. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm evil. So for Lockwood & Co, I'm going to read from the website. Uh, there is an epidemic of ghosts in Britain. Their touch brings death and only children have the power to fight them. Lucy Carlyle, a young psychic investigator, joins London's smallest agency run by the charismatic Anthony Lockwood and his ever-hungry assistant, George Cubbins. Together, the trio must investigate some of the spookiest and deadliest spectral hauntings in the city, armed with only the tools of the ghost hunting trade. Their courage and thermos of tea. Ghosts and ghouls beware. Doesn't this sound incredible? I am so excited. I think this is the entire series. I don't think there's any more. Oh god. Thank you so much, Claire. Thank you. I think I might know what's in this because I didn't just put books on my wish list. I think I put on some sweets too. Let's have a look. Oh my god, it is. It's sweets. Oh, and there's a book in here too. Oh my gosh. These are oh, Steph. Steph. From Steph Loves. Oh, Steph, I love you. Thank you so much. So I'm a sucker for jellies. And look, it's like loads of the rings. Like, I love the rings, the jelly rings. So Steph, thank you so much. Also, The Sad Ghost Club um, by Lies Meddings. And this is a graphic novel. I believe it's about a ghost who is just sad with anxious thoughts and goes around and... Yeah, I think this was a recommendation from one of my patrons, actually. So I'm excited to read it. I really am. But also, I will be able to read it with some rings, some Harry Bow friendship rings. <laughs> Thank you so much, Steph. I really, really do appreciate it. Now I want to try one of them now. Give them the Gavin Taste test. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. I'm going to seal them back up because I will end up just sitting there and eating them all. And that's not good. Okay, I've almost finished the first stack. This is the next box. There might be more sweets in this one, maybe? No, there's three books in here. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, it's my Nina. Thank you so much, Nina. Or Nomi, as you like to be called on Discord. But we have, ooh, The Ruthless Lady's Guide to Wizardry by C.M. Wagner. And I saw this one rather recently, actually. I think it was only in the past, like, month or so. This kind of gives me a little bit of, like, Stoke and Jack the Ripper kind of vibes. And also The Strange Case of the Alchemist Daughter vibes. I don't know why, but it, it just feels like that. Delaria Wells, petty con artist, occasional thief, and partly educated fire witch, is behind on her rent in the city of Lice Court again. Then she sees the wanted sign seeking female persons of martial or magical ability to guard a lady of some importance prior to the celebration of her marriage. Daddy fast talks her way into the job and joins a team of highly peculiar women tasked with protecting their wealthy charge from unknown assassins. Daddy quickly sets her sights on one of her companions, the confident and well-bred Wynne Sillenum. This job looks like nothing but romance and easy money until things take a deadly and undead turn. With the help of a bird-loving necromancer, a shape-shifting schoolgirl, and an ill-tempered reanimated mouse named Buttons, oh my god, Daddy and Wynne are determined to get the best of an adversary who wields a twisted magic and has friends in the highest of places. Totally forgot that there was a mouse called Buttons. Like, oh my gosh. Like, oh, it just, it looks fantastic. I cannot wait to give this one a read. So that's only the first out of three books from Nina. Oh wait, no, hang on. Wait, this wasn't on my wish list. There's two books in here and then something else, but I promise I didn't have this. How in the world can people send me things that aren't on my wish list? This is a revelation. But the next book is Spell... Not Spellsinger. Crown Breaker by Sebastian de Castell. This one is, I think, the final book in the Spellsinger series. It might not be the final, but I think it's like the sixth or seventh. But yeah, it has a nice Braxburg edges, and it's Sebastian de Castell. I read the first Spellsinger last year and really enjoyed it, and I really want to read the entire series, like, from start to finish, maybe for a reading vlog at some point. So this is going to be, like, really handy. But then also, what wasn't on my wish list was these. Belgian chocolate. <laughs> How? Oh my god, you should see the mess right now. Belgian chocolate? What are you- I've got these and then my Belgian chocolate? What? Oh my gosh, thank you so much though, Nina. Like, I appreciate this. I just wasn't expecting it because it wasn't on my wish list. So how- how in the world? But thank you. Thank you so much for- for sending it. So I want to grab that Belgian chocolate frosty, you know, when I've opened this last box. Well, in this pile anyway, I've still got two- two stacks to go. <laughs> oh, it's in another gift bag. Oh, it's from Paige. Oh, I think it's from my page. I'm pretty sure this is from my page, who is Paige's page on YouTube. Let's have a look-see. 
<laughs> yes, The Only Black Girls in Town by Brandy Colbert. I believe this was on Kayla's channel, Boots and Lala. I am absolutely so excited to read it. Beach loving surfer Alberta has been the only black girl in town for years. Alberta's best friend, Larami, is the closest person she has to her sister, but there are some things even she can't understand. When the bed and breakfast across the street finds new owners, Alberta is ecstatic to learn the family is black, and they have a 12 year old daughter just like her. Alberta is positive she and the new girl Edie will be fast friends. But while Alberta loves being a California girl, Edie misses her native Brooklyn and finds it hard to adapt to small town living. Suddenly the fast track to friendship doesn't seem so easy. When the girls discover a box of old journals in Edie's attic, they team up and secretly begin investigating who the journals belong to and why they got left behind. As the mystery unravels, the girls are led to the painful truth behind the journals and the shocking discovery of the story within. Oh uh, yes, and this is middle grade too. This is middle grade, so I'm gonna devour it, aren't I? So thank you so much, Paige, for this. This is incredible, thank you. Right, I'm gonna grab my Frostino and, and eat it. I also need to pee. But we do have two more stacks to go, so it's time for the interval. <laughs> I am back, I have my Frostino ready to go. Mm. Honestly, this is the most joy I've had in such a long time. Who needs men? Literally, who needs men? However, if you're single, come here. Ooh, oh, I saw this as well on somebody's um, channel. Oh, give note from J Jamie. Jamie, thank you so much. I feel like this. Oh, it's Michael Ceres. Oh, I know him. Oh, yes, I, I'm, I follow this author on Instagram. I believe this actually might be independently published as well. But yes, this is, oh, sorry, I should tell you what it is. This is All of My Friends Are Rich by Michael Ceres. I think this is a male, male romance, which I have been really wanting to do another steamy romance reading vlog. And I feel like this might be the one because I, I usually do get let down by a lot of male, male romances in the past. I love you, Jamie. <laughs> Why am I not surprised you would send me a male male romance? Orphan Leo Cotton has finally built a Jamie. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Orphan Leo Cotton has finally built a family, but the advent of bipolar depression wakes him from this dream life to reveal dark truths about the man he'd married. One year later, Leo is lost, embarrassed by a dead-end job that barely pays the bills. He can't help but notice that those around him are all enjoying success. When his closest friend, Sarah, asks him to be her best man, Leo reaches the last straw. How can he possibly afford these lavish festivities on his wages? A grinder chance encounter reveals that a shortcut to riches does exist, but in the end, this reckless route may cost him the loved ones he aims to impress and welcome terrible danger. Leo's trip will take him afar, but answers lie only within. So yeah, did I see this on someone's channel? This might have been recommended to me. I'm excited to read. I'm, I, I need more male male romance in my life, so this looks awesome. Thank you again, Jamie. Mwah. <laughs> Oh, Danny! So it's Pages and Co, Tilly and the Map of Stories by Anna James. This is the paperback version of it. It was one of my favourite books of last year. I got it in hardback. It's just come out in paperback. I need this for my Pages and Co shrine. I have a shrine for the series now. It follows Tilly Pages, who lives in a bookshop with her grandparents, and she has the ability to wander into books, but also have characters come out of books to traverse with her. The first book had some mysteries going on with it, and there's just this whole world of book wandering. And this is the third book in the series. It's my favourite one in the series so far. So now I have the paperback version of it to put in my shrine. So thank you so much, Danny. I really appreciate it. And then I just realised like none of these are in order. I don't know when they came or what. So it's going to be like a really random order. Oh, oh, this one's from Catherine. Thank you so much, Catherine. Arishat and the Tree of Wishes by Roshni Chokshi. This is the third book in the series. It is the Rick Ryden Presents one. It's the design. It's the American version of it. And it's just a great, phenomenal series. And yeah, this is the third book in that series. I've already explained what the, the books are. You know what? I'm feeling I might do a Rick Ryden Presents shrine as well, actually, to be fair. Oh, thank you so much. I feel like I might need to stir that better. Oh, there we go. So next we have... Honestly, I'm not looking forward to cleaning this mess up, to be honest. This one's from Scarlet Lily Shaw, and it is Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. I love the first book so much, Get Alive, Chloe Brown. I think this might be the second one, or it might be the third. I'm really excited to read it. It's like an adult romance series. It follows um, the lives of three different Brown sisters. And this one follows Danica Brown, and she knows what she wants, professional success, academic renown, and an occasional role in the hay to relieve all that career-driven tension. Don't we all? But romance, been there, done that, burn the t-shirt. So Danny asks the universe for the perfect friend with benefits. So it just sounds fabulous. I haven't read this one or the third book, so I'd love to read them both together. And maybe do a reading vlog for that too. 
Oh, this is a newish one that I've seen as well. Oh, it feels different to what I was expecting. Oh my god, it's from a big Cordy. Oh my god, it's Iron Hearted Violet by Kelly Barnhill, the author of The Girl Who Drank the Moon and The Witch's Boy. I wasn't the biggest fan of The Witch's Boy. Oh, this one came out even earlier than that one. This one came out in 2012. I'd never heard of any other books by Kelly Barnhill before The Girl Who Drank the Moon. Princess Violet is plain, reckless, and quite possibly too clever for her own good, particularly when it comes to telling stories. One day she and her best friend Demetrius, ooh, great name, stumble upon a hidden room and a peculiar book, a forbidden book, about the Nibas, an evil being that is imprisoned in their world. Little Joe Violet and Demetrius know that they, along with an ancient scarred drag scarred? Scarred dragon, yeah, definitely scarred. For some reason I thought it said sacred. Scarred dragon may hold the key to this wicked creature's triumph or its demise. It all depends on how they tell the story. Ooh, I am excited to read it. Even though I didn't love The Witch's Boy, I still think Kelly Bonner is a fantastic writer, and I think this is going to be awesome. So thank you so much, Cody. This is heavy. Ah, more sweets, more sweets. Oh, this one's from Hannah, from the Dead M. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Hannah. Teddy bears. They're the gold bears as well. I love them. Like, my niece and nephews are not touching these. I always have to have two at once. Oh, these will be gone tonight. But Hannah got me The Guide to Writing for Children in YA by Linda Strachan. This is like the Writers and Artists Yearbook that comes out yearly, I think, with help for people to get published. And I would love to be able to write a middle grade myself. And I have been writing one, but it just, I don't know if it's any good or not or anything. So it would be great to actually have some kind of guidance to that. And I think this is going to be perfect for that because, again, writing for children and YA. So if I wanted to branch out into YA, then I could. So this should be awesome. I'm not surprised this came from Hannah because she is a writer herself. So this is awesome. Thank you so much, Hannah. And thank you so much for these two. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh gosh. Ooh, you know what? Oh no! <laughs> Shit! I'm so sorry to everyone who sent me one of those books that are in there. Okay, I'm gonna have to be a lot more careful. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm so sorry about that. So the next one I did accidentally open because I thought this was from a publisher. This one is A Carter Witch by Nettie Okorafor. And this one, honestly, I'd seen the cover. Like, have you seen that cover? I've seen that cover around before. And I was like, you know what? I'm so interested in reading this. For the reason a gift notes, why I don't actually know who sent me this one. So this one follows Sunny, who lives in Nigeria, but she was born in New York City. Her future's a West African, but she's albino. She's a terrific athlete and can't go into the sun to play soccer. There seems to be no place where she fits in. And then she discovers something amazing. She is a free agent with latent magical power, and she has a lot of catching up to do. Soon she's part of a quartet of magic students studying the visible and invisible, learning to change reality. Reality. But just as she's finding her footing, Sunny and her friends are asked by the magical authorities to help track down a career criminal who knows magic too. Will their training be enough to help them against a threat whose powers greatly outnumber theirs? Oh my gosh, that's awesome! See, I'm so excited for this one. Let's open this one. <laughs> this one is from Sarah. Thank you so much, Sarah. But what is it? What is it, you ask? <gasps> oh, yes! Yes, 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 yes. This one I've seen all over BookTube recently, and I wanted it so bad, but I didn't get it when it was in hardback, and you just couldn't get it anymore in hardback. So I put the paperback one on my wish list, and it's Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. So many of my faves love this book. In the holy city of Tova, the winter solstice is usually a time for celebration and renewal, but this year it coincides with a solar eclipse, a rare celestial event prescribed by the sun priest as an unbalancing of the world. Meanwhile, the ship launches from a distant city bound for Tova and set to arrive on the solstice. The captain of the ship, Ziala, is a disgraced teak whose song can calm the waters around her as easily as it can warp a man's mind. Her ship carries one passenger. Described as harmless, the passenger, Serebio, is a young man, blind, scarred, and cloaked in destiny. As Ziala well knows, when a man is described as harmless, he usually ends up being a villain. Oh gosh, I have heard the best of things about this book, and again, so excited to read it, so excited. So thank you so, so much, Sarah. Got a nice cheeky little one now. This is Sarah Normal Ghost Town by Phoebe Rivers. So I was obsessed with Ghost Whisperer back in the day, back when it was on. I mean, the first three, three and a half seasons I absolutely adored. This one is middle grade. It's very, very short. But I think somebody said to me that it was a bit like Ghost Whisperer. But this one is from Mary. Thank you so much, Mary, for sending me this. Sarah Collins is a normal girl with an abnormal secret. She sees spirits. Sarah's had this ability almost as long as she can remember, but she doesn't like to talk about it. She wants nothing more than to have a normal life, and her normal doesn't include anything paranormal. But Sarah's ability isn't going away. In fact, changes are happening in her life will make it even more powerful. Her world is about to be turned upside down because she and her dad are moving across the country to an old short town in New Jersey, a 
town with more than its fair share of ghosts roaming around. Yeah, I think this was like part of a, a list that I saw online with like underrated children's books featuring ghosts. I'd be able to read it in one sitting, it's that short. Oh my god, thank you so much, Mary. <laughs> This one is from Tammy. Tammy, thank you so much for sending me this. I've seen this one, again, I think I've seen it the most on Lexi's channel from Alexandra Roslin, and that is The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making by Catherine M. Valentine. And I just absolutely love the idea of this. I love the title of this. Like, the title is just, oh, I love the title. The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making. Like, that is just such a, well, a long title, but such a great title. September is a 12-year-old girl from Omaha with her dad fighting a faraway war and her mum always out of work, she is lonely, stuck in a rut and starved of adventure. So when a green wind arrives at her window and invites her to fairyland, she accepts in a flash. Might and chew? <laughs> but Fairyland is in crisis, crushed by the iron rule of the villainous Marquess, and September holds the key to restoring order. With a book-loving dragon and a mysterious boy named Saturday by her side, she sets on a thrilling quest to fix things. But time is short and time is ticking, and every story must have an ending. Can September save Fairyland? Can she even save herself? <laughs> oh, it just sounds so good. It does. And magical. I love books which just like, this just has that whimsical feeling, and I haven't even opened the book yet, so oh, Tammy, thank you so much. Okay, next we have, oh, another bag. We have another bag, guys. Oh my god, this is from Terry. This one is from Terry, so thank you so much, Terry. <laughs> At Your Age, Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert, and I think this might be the third. Yeah, I think this is the third book in the Brown Sisters like trilogy. Terry, thank you so much for this. Now I have the second and third book in this series, so I can do my reading vlog for it now. Oh, this one follows Eve, who is a certified hot mess. No matter how hard she strives to do right, her life always goes horribly wrong. The Brown Sisters, just honestly, each one of them have felt so real. Like, especially, I mean, Chloe Brown, because that's the only one I've read so far. But she felt so real and so relatable. But when her personal brand of chaos ruins a wedding, her parents draw the line. It's time for Eve to grow up and prove herself even though she's not entirely sure how. Oh man, oh thank you so much. Thank you Terry. Oh this one's from Cassidy. Oh my god Cassidy, thank you. This is Amina's Voice by Henna Khan. Amina has never been comfortable in the spotlight. She's happy just hanging out with her best friend Sujin, except now that she's in middle school everything feels different. Sujin is suddenly hanging out with Emily, one of the cool girls in the class, and even talking about changing her name to something more American. Does Amina need to start changing too, or hiding who she is to fit in? Yes, oh my god, thank you so much. A really nice short middle grade. It's gonna be a really, really important one. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much, Cassidy. Yay, I have another Penguin English Library one. Oh, this one's from Jasmine, from JJ underscore the book nerd. And it is The Murders in the Room Morgue and Other Tales by Edgar Allan Poe. Oh my gosh, like a fantastic short story gothic writer. It's a collection of some of Poe's brilliant tales, including The Murders in the Room Morgue, The Telltale Heart, which I've read and I love that one, The Mask of the Red Death, and The Terrible Doom of the Fall of the House of Usher. Usher, Usher. This has been one that I've been really excited to get my hands on. I'd love to do a gothic classic reading vlog at some point. Mm. Thank you so, so much, Jasmine. Oh, <laughs> this one's from Becca, Becca Fowl, and it is Dead Voices by Catherine Arden. This is a sequel to Small Spaces. It follows like a small group of kids who, oh, oh my, my leg, who went on a school trip in the first book. This one I think follows like six months later. I did read it last year, but honestly, I can barely remember what happened in it. So I'm due a reread. So that's why I put it on my wish list. I really want to read this again, preferably during spooky season. I do remember that this one is set in a cabin. So, <laughs> thank you so much, Becca, for sending me it. <laughs> the next one is from Julie. Thank you so much, Julie, for this. This is a Barrington Stork book, so it's dyslexia friendly. And that is Tragedy at Sea, The Sinking of the Titanic by David Long, illustrated by Stefano Tambellini. Now, I'm trying to recommend more dyslexia friendly books on my channel, and I know a few people have been interested in the Titanic, especially after my Titanic comparison video with the book that predicted the Titanic, like 14 years before the actual sinking. So this is a child-friendly, dyslexia-friendly book about the Titanic. I really want to read it. I'm sure there's lots of things that I'll be able to learn from it because I've always been fascinated with the Titanic. And not just because I love the film, but just the genuine emotion I feel about the actual disaster that happened. So this is going to be fantastic. Thank you so much. And maybe because I know my niece as well, she is really interested in the Titanic. I'll read this first and I'll see if she wants to give it a read too. So thank you so 
much, Julie. I really appreciate this one. I, in fact, I appreciate all of them, but I really appreciate it. Thank you. I love when I have ones that I can share with my niece as well. This one's just wide open. I don't even need to do anything. The thing stuck on it, like the, the really sticky thing from Amazon's like stuck on it. I won't be able to get it off without ripping the entire back of it. So that's just gonna have to stay on. <laughs> but it's the Edge Chronicles. It's book three of the Jardy Saga or the Cade Saga. I don't know how to pronounce that one yet. And it's the Descenders. And I've been doing like a little low-key kind of Edge Chronicles read-along kind of thing just by myself really. And this one's from Harriet. Oh, Harriet, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I love how shiny this one is as well. Yeah, The Edge Chronicles is set in the On The Edge, which is like this really strange place full of magical things. And it's very dangerous as well. It, I've realized as I've been reading through the series, very brutal, it's very deadly and violent. <laughs> and a lot of people die. Okay, I might actually be able to pull some of this off. So I'm gonna do that when I'm not on camera though. But uh, yeah, it's a beautiful cover too. I love this series so, so much. I cannot wait to get to this part. I feel like this is like the final, final book in the series though, because it is split in two different trilogies and this is the last trilogy, I believe. So, oh, I'm excited. Thank you so much, Harriet. Okay, next we have one that I actually opened because I thought it was from a publisher. But I know exactly who this is from. But it is Harbour May by Jacqueline Woodson. This is definitely from Jessica, from Jessica Nicole Dickerson. I put this on my wish list because of her. This is one of her favourite middle grades. And I, it does have a sticker right over like some of the synopsis. It all starts when six kids are sent to a room for a weekly chat by themselves with no adults to listen in. At first they fear this new unfamiliar and wonder what on earth they'll even talk about. But in the place they dub the art room, they discover it's safe to discuss stuff they usually keep private. A father has recently gone missing and this... Well, I'm starting to struggle to say words now because I've spoken so much. A father has recently gone missing and that starts a conversation about the things causing angst in their lives, from racial profiling and fears of deportation to a deep yearning for family history and a sense of belonging. When the six of them are together, they find they can express their feelings and fears they usually hide from the world. And together, they grow braver and more ready for the rest of their lives. Thank you so much for the recommendation for one, Jessica, but also thank you for sending me it. Like, oh, I can't wait to read it. You do have taste, so I have no doubt I will also love it. Next we have... <laughs> oh, this is a brand new release. I've been so excited. So that's just all of that falling over. This is from Miss Day Reads, and it's Harley Hitch and the Iron Forest by Vashti Hardy, illustrated by George Amos. This is Vashti's book for younger readers, so usually she writes middle grade, but this is like a little bit younger than middle grade. Welcome to Inventia, where technology blooms, literally. Trouble seems to follow Harley Hitch everywhere. That might mean explosions at school, runaway robots, or a giant slug. Deep in the Iron Forest, Harley and her new friend Cosmo notice an unusual fungus. The forest is special. Its plants grow the mechanical parts that everyone needs. When the fungus starts spreading fast, all of Inventia could fall apart. Ooh, and honestly, it's just like filled with illustrations. It's huge writing. I could get through this in one sitting. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, Miss Day Reads. I love Vashti Hardy so much. It's one of my favourite authors of all time. Ooh, this one's wrapped up as well, but it has a purple bag. This has a purple bag. Ooh, that's so funky. And this one is from Katie. Oh, it's uh, it's an Emma Carroll book. It's Strange Star by Emma Carroll. And you know what? I think this was the book that was on my wish list the longest. Like, I'm sure I put this on my wish list in 2019. Like, this is how long it's been on my wish list for. So the year of 1816 felt extraordinary and all because of a strange sort of star in the sky. It's set at Lake Geneva in Switzerland. And early one morning, a servant boy named Felix delivers an invitation. Tonight at the mysterious Villa Diodati, there will be ghost stories that promise to freeze the blood. As darkness falls, the guests arrive. The storytelling begins. Then comes an unexpected knock at the door. Felix discovers a girl on the doorstep. She's travelled a long way to tell her tale, and now he must listen. But be warned, his is no ordinary ghost story. Sometimes the truth is far more terrifying. Oh, it does sound fantastic. And it is as well, a deliciously gothic thriller. Can you imagine a middle grade gothic thriller? Oh, so yes, thank you so much for sending me this, Katie. It was on my wish list the longest. I'm so glad you got me it. Thank you so much. This one is a bit heavier. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, oh, yay. Oh, I've also been seeing this around a lot lately. And um, this is from Megan from 12 Books a Day, The Crown of Gilded Bones by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is a sequel to From Blood and Ash, I believe it's called. And I I haven't read that book yet. So I don't want to read the back of this one. I've just, I've been excited to read it. I've seen so much on Booktube recently. This is absolutely huge. So thank you so much for sending me this, Megan. 
Wow, that is huge. There's a lot of fingerprints on the side as well. <laughs> oh, this is from Erica. Thank you so much for sending me this, Erica. This one is a recommendation. I know exactly where I got my recommendation for this one from, but it's from Starla from Starla Reads. And it is Once Upon a Burning Throne by Ashok K. Banker. And it's the first book in the Burnt Empire saga. And honestly, this is like one of Starla's like favoritest books. And I've just been meaning to pick it up, but it's huge and so scary to me. But again, like I want to read more books that intimidate me. And this one, it just looks fantastic. So welcome to the Burnt Empire. In a world where demigods and demons walk among mortals, the emperor of the vast burnt empire has died, leaving a turbulent realm without an emperor. Two young princes, Adri and Schwart, are in line to rule, but birthright does not guarantee inheritance. For any successor must sit upon the legendary burning throne and pass the test of fire. <laughs> Then honey, they've never had piles. In beautiful dark sorceries, the throne is a crucible, one that incinerates the unworthy. Adri and Schwart pass the test and are declared heirs to the Empire, but there is another with a claim to power. Another who also survives, a girl from an outlying kingdom. When this girl whose father is this powerful, Demon Lord Jason, is denied her claim by the interim leaders, Jason declares war, vowing to tear the burnt Empire apart, leaving the young princes Adri and Schwart to rule a shattered realm embroiled in rebellion and chaos. Whew. Sounds like a lot happens in this book and oh god am I excited to dive into this. Excited and scared. Thank you so much again Erica. Oh this one's from Kira. Oh my gosh and also thank you for putting your pronunciation in there as well. I'm also sorry if I did still end up mentioning it wrong. Oh! This one is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams, illustrated by Chris Riddell. I'm sure I only put this on a couple of days ago on my wish list because it's the 42nd anniversary edition and the illustrations by Chris Riddell just, just drew me in. And I have been interested in reading this actually. It is a bit of a classic now. A lot of people have read it. But with the added illustrations by Chris Riddell, it makes it less intimidating for me, not gonna lie. Oh, my legs are killing me though. Ah, Arthur Dent is already living a really bad day, even before the Earth gets demolished to make way for a new hyperspace express route. After that, things get much, much worse. With just a towel, a small yellow fish and a book, Arthur has to navigate through a very hostile universe in the company of a gang of unreliable aliens. Luckily, the fish is quite good at languages, and the book is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I don't know if it's middle grade. I don't know. Maybe it's span's age ranges. I feel like it could probably be any age to read this, but correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not 100% sure. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kiara. This is a very big, thin one. Ooh, graphic novel. Ooh, oh, of course. In fact, I think this is a picture book. I didn't even realise there was a picture book, but it's Catherine Rundle so I don't care. And this is from Effie. Oh, thank you so much, Effie. But I got One Christmas Wish by Catherine Rundell. I had no idea Catherine Rundell had done like any kind of Christmassy book. And this is a picture book, I think, but it's got like lots of writing in too. And I'm just like, I'm here for the Christmas vibes, honestly. And it's Catherine Rundell, what's not to love? It says, it's Christmas Eve and Theo, left at home with the babysitter, sees an odd looking star out of his window. He decides to make a wish. He wishes that he had some friends to keep him company. Moments later, the Christmas decorations begin to disentangle themselves from the tree behind him, ready to wreak a little havoc. This sounds so Christmassy, and it might be great to read to my niece and nephews as well for Christmas time. Oh, I'm so like, tempted to just dive in right now, to be honest. <laughs> Even though it's months away for Christmas, I'm just like, why not? Thank you, Effie. Oh yes, I saw this too, obviously, because I put it on my wish list. This one is from Larissa again. Larissa, how many did you get me? It's Tender as the Flesh by Agustina Bazterica. And this one, I did, oh, I can't remember whose channel it was now, but I definitely saw this and I thought it sounded really, really good. It all happened so quickly. First, animals became infected with a virus and then meat became poisonous. Then governments initiated the transition. Now special meat, human meat is legal. Marcus is in the business of slaughtering humans, only no one calls him that. He works with numbers, consignments, processing. One day he's given a gift to seal a deal, a specimen of the finest quality. He leaves her in his barn tied up, a problem to be disposed of later. But the specimens haunt Marcus. Her trembling body, her eyes that watch him, that seem to understand. And soon he becomes tortured by what has been lost and what might still be saved. And you know what? It is quite short, so I'm excited. I've been really wanting to read more stuff like this. I don't know if it's thriller or horror, but it sounds really good. I'm down to two bars on the battery. 
This one is sent to me from Caitlin. I don't usually read a lot of short stories, but this one just seemed like too good not to. But it's Once Upon an Eid, and this is Stories of Hope and Joy by 15 Muslim Voices by SK Ali and Aisha Saeed. And this, oh, it has like way more um, authors in there as well. So this is gonna be awesome. So Eid, the short single syllable word conjures up a variety of feelings and memories for Muslims. Maybe it's waking up to the sound of frying samosas and the comfort of bean pie. Maybe it's a thrill of putting on a new outfit for Eid prayers, or maybe it's a gift giving and holiday parties that come that day. Whatever it may be, for those who cherish this day of celebration, the feelings may be summed up by another short and sweet word, joy. Jubilant and filled with heart, Once Upon an Eid showcases the most brilliant Muslim voices writing today. I love reading books from different cultures so that I can learn and understand better about all the different people in this world, all the beautiful, gorgeous people of this world. Thank you, Caitlin. Oh. This was not on my wish list either. Who sent me this? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, who sent me this? First of all, this is amazing. Drink Me, Curious Cocktails from Wonderland by Nick Perry and Paul Rosser. This must, <gasps> of oh my gosh, I love this. It's just filled with different cocktails, like based on, you know, Alice in Wonderland. Who sent me this? Who has my address? Come on, own up. Let me know, please let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments who sent me this. I mean, it's perfect because I'll be making cocktails more. <gasps> that reminds me. I'm going to be making some sex on the beach today. I've learned how to make sex on the beach. I'm going to do that in my vlog. I'm going to do that in my Play Your TBR Ride Books I Lost To Episode 2 vlog. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, it's in paperback. Yes, 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 yes. The Jummy God's Revenge by Tracy Baptiste. I've been so excited for this, but I didn't want to get the hardback because I've got the first two in paperback. It's just come out in paperback. Oh, yes, I love the first two books so, so much. This is the third book, and I've been so excited for it. This one is from... Where's the gift note? Oh, there it is. This one's from... Oh, it's from Becca again. Thank you so much, Becca Fowl. Thank you so much for sending me this. <gasps> oh, my God, I can't wait to read it. I might read all three of them together. Yeah, I think that sounds like a good shout. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much. Oh, this book just gives me huge Polar Express vibes. This one's from Tracy, and it's The Silver Arrow by Lev Grossman. And I've had my eye on this for a little while. I think it came out at the end of last year. When Kate is given a colossal steam train for her birthday, she can't believe her luck. After 11 years of waiting, adventure has finally found her. Soon the Silver Arrow is whisking Kate and her brother Tom to a magical station where their passengers stand by ready to board. From the porcupine to the pangolin, each one is rare and wonderful. But these animals have been waiting a very long time too. Can Kate deliver them home before it's too late? Tracy, thank you. You know I love me some magical middle grade. And it just looks perfect. A little bit train to impossible places meets the Polar Express. That's what it sounds like to me. Take off on my makeup. Cause I love what's on it. Oh yes, this is gonna go so great with my nutcracker. Harriet, this is from Harriet again. It's the Snow Queen. It's the Snow Queen by Hans Christian Andersen, but it's in this gorgeous edition that um, I have the nutcracker for, which I did a reading vlog for, by the way. Um, and yeah, oh my God, I love the Snow Queen. It's like my favorite fairy tale. And it has those illustrations, the illustrations by Sana Anuka. And it's just, I, I love the design of it. Like, look at the, the illustration of it. Like, this is incredible. It's my favorite fairy tale. Harriet, thank you, thank you. You know what the story of the Snow Queen is, and I'm on two bars of battery, so I don't want to rehash it. But uh, yeah, I can't wait to reread it. I really want to reread it for winter. Oh my gosh, I love it, I love it. I love it so much. Oh my God, one of my faves. Oh, this one's from Victoria Rowe. It is Good Night, Mr. Tom by Michelle McGorian. I haven't read this since I was a kid. And I don't even know if it's like as great as I remember it to be, but I think it will be. I remember being quite emotional after I read it. The Second World War has broken out. Young Willie Beach is evacuated to the countryside. A sad, deprived child, he slowly begins to flourish under the care of kind old Tom Oakley. But then his cruel mother summons him back to war-torn London. Will he ever see Mr. Tom again? Yeah, this was like a childhood favourite of mine. I cannot wait to reread it. I might do a rereading childhood favourites vlog, even though I've already been like kind of doing that already. <laughs> Just not vlogging it. <laughs> Thank you, Victoria. This one feels like really light. It feels like there's nothing in it. <laughs> what? This was not on my wish list. What? It's a pair of socks. <laughs> and it has don't be an ass on it with donkeys on. That's hilarious. No gift, no again, so I have no idea who sent it. But you know what? You can never have enough socks. And getting older as well, I've realised just the importance of having socks. Oh my god, I'm so I don't even know how long this has been going on for. I'm so sorry. 
There's a parcel in a parcel? What? What is this? Wait, there is a book, but there's also this. Like, what's this? Oh, it's from Harriet again. Thank you, Harriet. This, I don't think this was on my wish list, whatever it is. Oh. Oh, wow, okay. Frozen diamond patent kit. What? Oh, that's so cool. I, I've never diamond painted before, but some of my friends were obsessed with doing it like a couple of months back. I don't know if they still are. It's a frozen one. Oh, this is great. I've got a week off coming up. I can do it like, during that week off. Oh, it's, oh, thank you, Harriet. You know me so well. Not only did they get me that, but they also got me Blood Witch by Susan Dennard. This is the third book in that series. And I don't really know too much about the series, but I do have the first two and I'm excited to read them. It's like 600 pages long. Wow, this is a chunky book. It's definitely the biggest of the series so far. So yeah, this is so cool, but I'm just surprised. Like, how do people keep sending me things that are on my wish list is what I want to know. I love how this is not really just a book haul. It's like an everything haul. <laughs> and I hold this myself. Oh, this one's from Emma, aka CC Reads 23. Oh, and not just that, but it is wrapped in sight too. Oh, interesting. Oh, remember how I mentioned the Titanic before? There's this one too. I don't know if it's um independently published or not, but it is the Titanic Detective Agency by Lindsay Littleson. And I do think this is um, a little bit like Midmost and Ladylike, but on the Titanic. So Bertha Watt, tree climber and would-be polar explorer, is excited to be on RMS Titanic's maiden voyage as she leaves Aberdeen behind for the glamour of a new life in America. But Bertha quickly realises that some passengers are behaving strangely and she determines to unravel their secrets. With new friend Madge, Bertha sets up her own detective agency to try and solve the mysteries on board, but they had no idea that disaster was looming for Titanic. Again, I love Titanic. I love the history of Titanic. Really excited to read more books with the Titanic in it. And this is middle grade, which I think you probably already knew. <laughs> Thank you for sending me it, Emma. Oh, there's two in here. These are from Louise. Thank you, Louise. So we have Remesa, A Fairy Tale by Radia Hafiza. And this one was a very recent children's book of the month at Waterstones, and I've been really needing to read it. But this does follow Remesa, aka Rapunzel, as she escapes the Tower of the Evil Witch. She ends up meeting up with Stephen Sarah, aka Stephen Beauty, and Cinderella, aka Cinderella. So it sounds really good. I can't wait to read that. Not only did Louise send me that, but also Shooting Kabul by N.H. Sensei. I wanted to read books, uh, middle grade books that deal with 9-11, later on in this year and uh, talk about them. So this is one of them that was recommended to me. Fatty never imagined he'd start middle school in Fremont, California, thousands of miles from home in Kabul, and half a world away from his missing six-year-old sister Miriam. Adjusting to life in the United States isn't easy for Fatty's family, and as the events of September 11 unfold, the prospects of locating Miriam in war-torn Afghanistan seem slim. When a photography competition with a grand prize of a trip to India is announced, Fatty sees his chance to return to Afghanistan and find his sister. But can one photo really bring Miriam home? Based in part on Miss Sansai's husband own experience fleeing Soviet-controlled Afghanistan in 1979, Shun Kabul is a powerful story of hope, love and perseverance. Sounds incredible. Honestly, it really does. This might have been recommended from Ashley from Bookish Realm, actually. I think maybe. So thank you for my two books, Louise. Oh God, I'm down to one battery now. It was on full charge when I started. <gasps> These ones are from Madison's and you are welcome for the inappropriate jokes as well. But we have Grown by Tiffany Day Jackson. Corey Fields is dead. When Enchanted Jones wakes up with blood on her hands and zero memory of the previous night, no one, the police and Corey's fans included, has more questions than she does. All she really knows is that this isn't how things are supposed to be. Corey was Enchanted's ticket to stardom. That's all I'll read from the synopsis because I don't want to spoil myself. I've seen fantastic things about this book around on booktube, so I'm excited to read it. And then Madison also sent me City of Rust by Gemma Fowler. This is a middle grade, I think a fairly new middle grade, that I had my eye on. It looks so interesting. But really dreams of winning the biggest drone race on Earth with her biorobotic gecko, Atti. But when her chance is crushed, she plays skywards, hiding out among the junkers who mine the rubber orbit in the planet. Yet though, Bailey discovers something far worse than losing out. A huge trash bomb will destroy the world unless she and Addie do something about it. This is the race of a lifetime. It sounds like a little bit like Wally and it's very sci-fi, middle grade. Oh, I need more sci-fi middle grade in my life. This sounds fantastic. Thank you for these books, Madison. I really appreciate it. Sorry, I'm flying through these now. Oh, I've got more sweets. <laughs> these are from Harriet as well. Harriet, thank you so much. But it's cola bottles. It's Haribo cola bottles. If you do not already know, Haribo is my favorite, okay? So yeah, I need to taste test these, of course. I have two again. 
Oh, and then having also sent book one and two of the Shardy Saga or Cade Saga of the Edge Chronicles. As I mentioned, I got book three, but oh my god, Harry, thank you so much. This is essentially the entire Cade Saga that I now have. I'm just gonna call it the Cade Saga, I think, yeah. Oh, Harry, you have spoiled me as well. That better be in the last, that better be in the last gift you sent me. Five puzzles to go, can I do it before the battery runs out? Let's find out. Here's a die. Oh, it's blank. So I don't know who this one is from. Honestly, this is a race against time with this battery, oh my god. Oh, and this one's also packaged as well. Oh, this one, yes. I'm sure I saw this on Ashley's from Boogish Realms channel as well. I'm sure of it. It's Not Your Psychic by C.B. Lee. Welcome to Andover, where superpowers are common, but internships are complicated. Just ask high school nobody Jessica Tran. Despite her heroic lineage, Jess is resigned to a life without superpowers and is merely looking to beef up her college applications when she stumbles across the perfect paid internship. Only it turns out to be for the town's most heinous supervillain. And that's all I read about the synopsis, but it just sounds so fantastic. It looks short-ish. So, oh, I'm excited. Thank you to whoever sent me this. I will try and find out who sent me it. Thank you. Nearly there, nearly there. This is a workout. Oh my gosh. There's two, two packaged in here. Oh, these are from CC Reads as well. Oh my God, thank you so much, Emma. I'm really just like, there's, there's no time to mess around now. There's no time. It's The Secret of Birds and Bone by Kiri Millwood Hargrave. This is gonna be with all of my Kiri Millwood Hargrave paperbacks now. Oh, I love it. It's like set in Italy. It's uh, very gothic. It follows um, two kids, a brother and sister, and their mother is like this bone weaver. She can make trinkets out of the bones of like lost loved ones. That's like a, a normal thing. She gets arrested so the kids end up going to like this convent and they try to escape to save their mother. Fantastic book, absolutely loved it. And I love the um, paperback cover of it as well. It's just, it's beautiful. Thank you for that. But what else did you send me, Emma? What else? You've already spoiled me as well. This is naughty. Uh, what is this? Oh, yes, yes, yes. It's a Disney Twisted Tale. It's Unbirthed Day by Liz Braswell. Oh my gosh, this is like the Alice in Wonderland retelling. What if Wonderland was in peril and Alice was very, very late? Oh, quite a chunky one, actually. It's probably the biggest Disney Twisted Tale yet. Nearly 500 pages, wow. Alice in Wonderland retelling, I'm there. I am there. But this looks so good, I love that cover too. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Emma. Thank you so, so much. Three more to go. Ooh. Oh, there's two in here. Who sent me them? Nina, you've sent me laws already as well. And I got this recommendation from Bay. But The Legend of Skeleton Man, it's a two book collection. No, I definitely did. This is what I got the recommendation from them. So it's a frightening collection that brings together Skeleton Man and The Return of the Skeleton Man. And those are two modern horror classics that are children's books. Molly's father, who grew up on the Mohawk Reserve, always had the best stories. One of her favourites was The Legend of Skeleton Man, a gruesome tale about a man with insatiable hunger. But ever since her parents mysteriously vanished, those spooky tales have started to feel all too real. It just, oh, it sounds so good. And I'm positive I got that from Bear's video. And then we have The Murderous Ape by Jacob Wegelius. This was a book of the month, the month before I joined my bookstore. And I was so interested in reading it. It doesn't sound like something I would generally be interested in, but as soon as I read the synopsis, I was like, oh, okay. Sally Jones is an extraordinary gorilla and a brilliant ship's engineer who sails the high seas on the Hudson Queen with the loyal friend, the chief. One day, the ship needs to offer a mysterious job that promises to pay big bucks, but then disaster strikes. The job goes wrong, and the chief is falsely convicted of murder. And this is middle grade, by the way. For Sally Jones, this is the start of a grand adventure and a desperate quest to clear her friend's name. By freighter, steam train, and biplane, the intrepid ape journeys from Lisbon to Bombay and beyond in search for the truth. But powerful forces are working against her, and they will do anything to protect their own secrets. It's a chunky middle grade, but I've heard good things and I really like the sound of it. So thank you again for sending more Nina. That better be in the last of it as well that like you've sent me. Okay, two more. Totally got this. These are from a slog. And please let me know if I pronounced your name wrong. But they sent me The Winter House Mysteries by Ben Goodison and Starfell, Willow Moss and the Lost Day by Dominic Valente. I didn't own this one. Like I've got the second and third one, but I didn't own this one. So this one, I read it though and I really enjoyed it, but it follows Willow Moss who is the last of a long line of witches she has the power to find our things and in this one a whole day goes missing so thank you so much for sending me that now i can complete the starfell collection and then we have the winter house mysteries which i think is the third book in the winter house series which is just like this cozy little mystery series but yeah it's very wintry <laughs> very green glass house-esque so, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to read it. So thank you so much for sending me both of those. So finally, on to the last box. <gasps> there's more sweets, there's more sweets. Okay, oh, awesome. Who sent me these? Oh, these are from Corey. 
from Reading at 3am. There's two books in here. There's The Gravity of Us by Phil Stamper. This is an LGBTQ plus YA. When Carl's dad is selected for NASA's mission to Mars, Carl feels like his future is falling apart. How can he become a serious journalist when his own family is part of the hottest story around? And how long can his parents pretend to be picture perfect when all they do is fight? Only Leon understands. He's a natural kid too. Before Carl knows it, falling apart becomes falling head over heels. Oh, so it's like, yeah, it's gay. I love it. And then Rumble Star by Abby Elphinstone. This, right, she's one of my favourite authors. I'm going to be doing an interview with Abby Elphinstone soon and I'm so excited. This is the first book of the Unmapped Chronicles series. Fantastic series, absolutely love it. It's like this kingdom set in the sky. In the first one, we follow Casper Tuck and he goes through like this grandfather clock to the kingdom in the sky. There's this evil harpy Moog who is wreaking havoc. It's great, I love it. The last thing is cherries. Harry Bow cherries. These are some of my favorites. Oh my God, let me taste test quickly before the camera dies. I'll just have one because, oh, oh my God, yes, yes. So Katie, thank you so much for sending me these two books and these cherries. Thank you so, so much. I honestly, I need to show you the mess. Right, so I think I've hidden all the addresses, but look at all of that mess. <laughs> that is a mountain. I cannot wait to flat pack all of this. <laughs> oh, thank you again, guys. Honestly, I really appreciate it. Okay, so in the front of Curry of not having the battery run out, I accidentally left two parcels. They must have gotten mixed up with all of the empty boxes when the stack fell over. So I want to quickly unbox these. This unboxing is all over the place. I'm so sorry. This is not professional. If you're a new person watching my videos, I understand if you don't want to subscribe. Let me open these and I'm so sorry to whoever sent me these. Almost, almost missed them. But as I was flat packing everything, which took me ages, it does go out in the recycle bin though. Please recycle. I totally missed it. So we have our first one. I got myself another little gift bag. Oh my gosh, it was CC Reads 23 again. Oh my gosh, thank Thank you. What book is it? What book is it? Oh, it's Arusha and the Song of Death. And this is the second book in the Pandava Quintet series by Roshni Chokshi. I did haul the first and third book in this box. Oh, you can't see my address, can you? No, it's fine. So thank you so much for sending me an Arusha book. That's like all three of them so far. And then finally, this parcel has, oh, the biggest book in the Edge Chronicles series, which is The Immortals by Paul Stewart and Chris Fidel. This is the Nate Saga, but the Nate Saga is literally just one book. And it's a chunky one. It is, oh, it's nearly 700 pages. And again, I've gotten other Edge Chronicles books in this haul, so I don't need to tell you what this is about. So that's good. But who sent me this? Harriet. Harriet again sent me this book. Thank you so much, Harriet, for sending me it. You didn't have to, but oh my gosh, I now, I think this is now all of the Edge Chronicles that I own. So I love it. I love it. It's my childhood favourite series. Uh, so these are the two additional books that I got in this haul that I nearly didn't open. So thank you so much everyone who has sent me something. I really do appreciate it, like more than you know. And honestly, I just wish I could send you everything back to every single person who sent me something. A little bit unfeasible, but honestly, like that's what I want to do. But that is the end of this video. Please leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment, let me know if I hold any of your favourite books in this video. And I will hopefully see you in the next one. Bye.